I wanted to do a vlog on kind of like all the just super weird kind of things that happened to me in, in living in Hollywood and Los Angeles and, and running a studio there for a year. So I was uh, I mean, just crazy weird anecdotes of some interest, unlike my normal vlog, like almost interesting stories, you know. But uh, I got a job doing security because uh, basically it, it, it let me study and it was just easier than digging ditches or washing cars and uh, my very first job doing security and I was literally crashing in my car it was the middle 80s and I just got to LA I was just a country boy and, and I was crashing in my car and I would call in and see if this company that I'd signed up with for got me security jobs and I called in my very first one My very first job, security, I was assigned to Gary Shandling to be kind of like a bodyguard to him on the set when he was shooting a show. He, he used to have a show. I don't know if he does anymore. And I was with him a few months. I got to know him a little bit. And uh, I don't know if he'd know me by name, maybe by face. But anyway, uh, I uh, the very first, I mean, I was literally crashing in a car, you know. And... Uh, would get dressed in my uniform and I'd get out and they're at Gower Gulch and uh, I think it's the Fox lot and I would uh, go in and when he was shooting that show and uh, do the uh, do security for, with, for Gary like personally assigned to him and uh, anyway I met this guy and one of the actors the char there's a lot of character actors in Hollywood you know them by face and you know who they are but you don't really know their names and I uh, uh, I was backstage kind of guarding the doorway to Gary's room or whatever not that he's a big star <laughs> or anything but you know whatever and uh, Somebody came walking up to me, a guy, and he looked at me and he just kind of tapped me on the shoulder and he goes, if you knew anything about me at all, you would know I never eat red meat, you know, and I was just like, what the, and uh, he goes, oh, I'm an actor on the show, I'm, I'm just running my line, so anyway, th this guy's name was Roy Brocksmith, and you've seen him hundreds of times, he's been in tons of stuff, and uh I was watching Hudsucker Proxy last night, and I noticed two guys that I that, that I knew, like uh, character actors, bit players, uh, and directors tend to hire them over and over again because it gives you the feeling like, oh, that's kind of a known guy. It's good for their film. So, anyway, I got to know Roy a little bit and, and at backstage at the show, and and uh, finally, after a few weeks, he. Uh, he kind of knew my story, and he said, hey, I've been thinking, and he knew my situation. I was basically living in my car, you know, for a while there. And uh, he said, I know, I know your situation and everything. He goes, I think you should become part of this group. He had, he says, there's like 20 or 30 of us. I put together a group of, of character actors, and this will ensure the next 30 or 50 years or however long you're in Hollywood, kid, will be just a wonderful time and memories you can pass down to your family and everything. And I've always kind of had, acting just seems so superficial and sort of narcissistic and just stupid to me. I was like, I don't think so, no, no. And so anyway, I actually ended up playing guitar. He had like a home, they call it like, home theater and I don't know what it is they put on like really professional plays at their houses and when you get there it's set in a period and he did talk me into doing that he said well could you pretend to play guitar in one of my plays and I did and that was a trip and I got to know him pretty well over the years but they did actually if you as I got to know him and this group of like actors and stuff this this group he'd put together they they pretty much dominated all the character actor work in in Hollywood in like the 70s 80s and 90s uh, these people you see over and over again these bit players you know I'll, I'll see if I can't find some clips of Roy and then another guy I'm going to talk about here in a second Ernie who I'm kind of responsible for him dying in a way you know not not totally, but it was weird. So, um, so Roy, anyway, for the next 20 years in Hollywood, or however long he lived, it was a long time. He died at 56, I think I read last night. Uh, 
it was years and years he would call me he had my number he would call me so often we'd just talk and shoot the breeze and he and i i realized it was a huge mistake he said like within the first few weeks he said i can get you work kid you won't live in the car you'll be sort of a movie star sort of and you'll you know have all this this great life in hollywood and you won't hardly have to you know we won't have to work that much and and i'm certain i can we dominate the the market and of course i said no you know i'm not interested can i really hate it I, I at that time i just hated actors and acting so um that was roy and then how did, oh i saw that roy was in hudsucker proxy and so is ernie ernie plays the tailor in hudsucker proxy so i'd kind of been in loose touch with with roy brocksmith over the years and we were kind of friends and uh saw him quite a bit talked to him quite a bit he's one of those people that kept a rolodex and would sort of touch base with you every month or two you know um and he always said you should be an actor i'm telling you this is good this would be great for you and uh, anyway, so I said no. But then, uh, uh, so how did I end up? Uh, oh, at the coffee shop, I would go to this coffee shop where a lot of kind of huge actors would sort of come in and out and go. Some would hang out, and then all. But more than that, there was just tons of people who wanted to be actors there, and bit play all kinds of stuff, stir crazy. Uh, on Melrose and it was near my studio so I started going there and I met this guy an old old actor he plays the tailor in Hudsucker Proxy his name is Ernie and uh, I can't remember Ernie Cercino or I, I think he worked under another name too and he had gone back to Hollywood for uh, he, his history went way way back and I had uh, um where am I at time wise? Oh, six. Good. I can bring this in under ten, I think. Uh, I had uh, uh, met him and made friends with him and at the coffee shop. Kind of got to know him over like a period of years. And then finally, I, I, me, uh, myself, I met him and a, another friend and I, another director, and I uh, began to realize, oh, this guy's just he is Hollywood history. His stories, I mean, he knew everybody. He had worked on every movie. So uh, I actually took like probably and, and got I'd go to Ernie's house sometimes and visit him. He was an old guy, you know, old guy and getting older, you know, like getting up there. And we were good friends. And anyway, um, to show you how things weird things tie together. So I married eventually during this era. I married a Russian girl that I met on the internet, and uh, she brought over a case of uh, like a. Uh, a, a type of shingles it's not like when the the settlers brought new kind of viruses and bacteria to the Indians kind of the same thing happens when you deal with people abroad you get all these weird illnesses you've never had you're not immune to them. she brought sort of, this ties in she brought sort of a uh, a case I got a case of the shingles that was so unbelievably I was just 105 temperature walking around like a zombie like felt like I was 10 foot out of myself but before I got diagnosed with that anyway she went back to Russia I decided to go to the coffee shop and I was just totally sweating and just fever and out of myself I was really sick and uh, I went to the coffee shop that night to try to kind of just walk it off or something I didn't know what was up I had the shingles really bad and that when it first comes on it's horrid and uh, Anyway, part of the, the disorder I have now is is uh, post-herpetic neuralgia related to shingles. So anyway, I go to the coffee shop, and Ernie's there, and I'm sitting there talking to him, and I'm out of myself, and we're just talking, having coffee, and being friends, and, and talking about stuff. And he would always say that line from the, tale, the, the Hudsucker Proxy, because the whole movie hinges on whether he gives this guy a double stitch in his pants or not. I'll try to insert that clip in this. It's Paul Newman. So he was just thrilled. He, he got to, you know, he had met everybody anyway, but he, Paul Newman was, he really liked that. And I'd always say, a double stitch, Ernie. Oh, yes, you're such a nice fella, double stitch. Well, anyway, I was talking to Ernie that night. I had the shingles. And so I finally went home. I ended up in the hospital for, it was so bad. It was just horrible, you know. But when I went back to the coffee shop about six weeks later, uh, I kind of asked Dino, the guy who owned the coffee shop, I said, hey, what's happening with Ernie? How's he doing? And he goes, oh, man, I'm so sorry to tell you Ernie passed away. 
And I go, yeah, what happened? He goes, oh, you know, I saw you guys in here that night. And he goes, you know, the next couple of days, they said he came down with the shingles and it caused this reaction and this fever and this whole thing. And he died, you know, he, and he must have been in terrible pain. It's just, he couldn't even go out for several days. He finally died from it. And I was like, oh, no, man. Remember, I came in here, I had the shingles that night. My guy, I mean, Ernie got it. I guess it turned into some kind of complications and measles type thing with him and he died he was old don't go around older young people so anyway uh it just it's just so weird all the weird that's just a couple of the weird little almost interesting stories that have happened to me now i have thousands of little encounters like that um and uh but it was so weird because uh I actually was making a documentary about Ernie's life. He was a radio man in World War II on B-29 bombers, and he knew Andy Rooney, who also was like, I was just crazy. His apartment was like a shrine to all these kind of film history and Hollywood thing, uh, Ernie. And, uh, and he knew... Uh, Roy Brocksmith. I told him that. I saw a picture of Roy in his house, and I was like, "Oh, you know Roy? Oh, yeah, we're good friends." So, I I sort of, I knew both of these guys, you know, um, and uh, so that was kind of trippy, to, uh, the history of films and stuff. And then that tied me into another actor named Sandy Barron, who was my roommate for a while. He's the uh, take the pen on Seinfeld. That guy. So, you know, all these weird, weird, wacky things happen to me in L.A. And I'm sure it happens to everybody who lives there. It's just if you live in kind of middle America or whatever, it's probably hard to believe that that stuff happens a lot and that it's it's just part of the deal of living in L.A. and Hollywood. So, a speedy vlog, but I wanted to kind of mention that. And I could tie in Rob Reiner, who I met on, on uh, and got to know a little bit on... Uh, Gary Shandling show and, and and tons of other people into this thing but anyway it was a big mistake for me not to become a character actor uh, Roy called me relentlessly for years and was a good guy helped me out in a lot of different ways but I was kind of, I was just found acting kind of embarrassing and kind of narcissistic and kind of felt stupid and I didn't want to do it but I see now that was a huge mistake because these guys if as I look at movies and I slowly met everybody in Roy's acting group and people from playing the guitar in his play and stuff and, and knowing him, they did dominate for years and years uh, the extra kind of, not even extra, character actor thing in L.A. And he wanted me to be a part of that and I just flatly said no from the day one, you know. So some of the shit you do, you just don't know. So anyway, there you go. They're kind of interesting little characters that that I ran into. And there's, I could, I, I was laying in bed thinking last night. I could literally tie probably a hundred like famous people into this whole uh, Roy Brocksmith. Uh, Gary Shandling show story, but it's uh, making that interesting is a whole other issue. So there you go. Peace out.